Every once in a while, my DMs blow up. This is one of those occasions. A load of people requesting that I react to this segment on CNBS. I've not yet watched it, but judging by the requests, this could be rather entertaining. So let's watch the great Tesla debate as Tesla stock itself continues to shit the bed. Tesla shares down more than 35% year to date, and the company now set to report earnings next week. Analysts divided on where the stock's heading from here, and so is the investment committee, it turns out. Bryn Long, why short? Bryn, make your case. Why should we still believe in this stock? Now, you should never judge a book by its cover, but I just want to conduct a poll here. We just heard that one of these people is short Tesla stock and one is long Tesla stock. If that's all you knew, who would you guess is what? Who's long and who's short? Yeah, no, I totally, I totally wouldn't have any intuition about that either. Story. Well, the stock right now doesn't look good. So let's just separate the two, the stock from the company. Um, may- wow, I'm impressed already. Some logic out of the gates. Differentiating Tesla stock versus the actual company. Something a lot of quote unquote investors seem incapable of doing when the stonk's down. Make no mistake, the chart looks terrible. Don't forget that in January of 2023, I bought it around 120. This stock got to, I think, 100 bucks during the early part of one day of trading. And that's with earnings estimates of $5 for full year 23. So we're not even going to sniff that this year. So this stock could go lower. So let me make that clear. It looks broken right now. Why I would not disc what I wouldn't discount is Elon is I think he's one of the most you know prolific innovators and engineers of our time with SpaceX literally I think NASA would be defunded with what he's done with energy storage and EVs and then at Neuralink and so I do think though though he is going to have right now between this earnings report which will be bad and the shareholder package I think it's very murky right now because make no mistake part of this valuation is based on sentiment and also valuations, margins and earnings expanding. So I see absolutely why Steve is short. I don't think he's going to be short long term. I think it's probably a trade, but I think longer time we will get some clarity and this will be over the next few months, a potentially good opportunity to add or buy to the position. Well, for what it's worth, I still continue to buy with every spare cent with a long term horizon, a decade plus. Seems like the deal of the century to me. Of course, only time will tell. My question for Bryn in, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be difficult with this, is that as a fiduciary of her investor's capital, how could she invest in a company where there is no governance, there is no independent voice on the board? Well, this is shaping up to be quite the classic. Steve here, low key, taking a few shots at Bryn. Not trying to be a dick, but let me be a dick. How could you possibly invest your client's money in this when the company's terrible, Elon bad, etc.? Look forward to the clapback where they've gone out and made an acquisition like Solar City, right, to stop it from failing because it was his brother's company and because the federal government told SpaceX, you've got to stop buying Solar City bonds with the money we're giving you for R&D, where he's tried to buy, you know, use Tesla. Bro, this is so good. <laughs> We've got the full Tesla Q tinfoil hat thesis right now. He's going down the entire bullet point list. This is amazing. The cherry on top will be if he describes full self-driving as a fraud or a lie or something along those lines. Let's see. Tesla, for the, to buy material for his house, the windows, where he wants a $55 billion pay, uh, pay package, and where we saw Jack Dorsey with two companies. We've got Elon Musk with multiple companies that all require his time. Plus, there's the allegations, and we saw it on Joe Rogan's you know, broadcast, of drug use. So how... Fuck me, dude. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. He's lit oh, about 50 spot fires now, so there's no possibility of Brent addressing them individually. This is a classic debating tactic from people who don't play fair. They don't fight fair. I note so far, by the way, nothing that Steve has said has centred around Tesla, the company, or their execution. Just FUD, lies, misinformation, hearsay, rumours, allegations, and falsehoods regarding Elon's character. A lot of saying things without saying them, suggesting something... Is this the best he's got? He seems very focused on Elon as opposed to Tesla. Is it just me? I mean, he could have said margins are collapsing. There's no debate. The competition's coming. EVs are not the future. Hybrids are. None of that. Zero. This seems personal to me. How does a fiduciary own this company with anti-shareholder governance repeatedly time after time after time? 
Uh, did he just say anti-shareholder governance? Uh, hmm. Let me see here. What was I paying for Tesla stock back in 2016? Uh, that would be $13 per share, $16 per share, $17 per share, $16 per share, $13 per share, $13 per share, $12 per share. How about $17? $15 per share, $20 per share. What about 2018? $17, $18, $17, $16. How about 2019? 18, 17, 16, 15, 13, 12 dollars per share. What are we at now? A 10x from there? Hmm. If by anti-shareholder you mean pro-shareholder, I mean I've 10x my investment here, and then some. I'm still buying, and you better fucking believe I'm going to be revisiting what I was paying in 2022, 23, 24 at the end of this decade. It's a very strong allegation here. Again, not discussing the company, but seeming to suggest there's a problem with leadership. They don't have investors' best interests at heart. What the fuck, bro? Steve, this seems very personal, which, spoiler alert, seems to be the case without exception among all because of short sellers. It's never about the company. It's always about Elon. If I didn't know any better, and I obviously do, but if I didn't know any better, I would probably suggest possibly, and I'm no psychologist, but if I put my armchair psychologist hat on for a moment, I might suggest that these folks shorting Tesla stock, curiously enough, all men, Possibly see in Elon Musk what they wish was present in themselves, feel inferior, and as a cope, they decide the guy's terrible, he's a horrible human, he's dishonest, he's a fraud, he's trying to destroy investor value, he's an incompetent leader, Elon bad, therefore I'm not a loser, I don't hate myself, fuck you Elon, I'm shorting Tesla stock. It just seems to be a recurring theme, and I just wonder maybe if it's just some sort of projection of insecurities onto Elon among many of these short sellers who for whatever reason, just always seem to be attacking Musk and his character, or allegations of drug use, as opposed to talking about the company and being short the company. In other words, it seems like 95 plus percent of the Tesla short sellers are not short Tesla, they're short Elon, because they hate Elon, because they hate themselves. Isn't it worth just passing on this and going to something you don't have to explain owning? Yeah, well, I own this personally, first of all. This is a personal position. So I think, you know, we love to own broad-based ETFs for the majority of our client base. So this is not a fiduciary decision. This is my decision. And so I think that, you know, what you're pointing out, I mean, these things, you know, I think you just don't like Elon. And so I think that if you... Oh, shit. She said the thing that's accurate. Uh, I, bro, nailed it. I mean, what was I just saying about this seeming to be personal? He's talk She's just hit it out of the fucking park. Facts have been spat. Clearly, we have somebody here with at least some emotional intelligence, enough to be able to detect that Steve, like most Tesla short sellers, just don't like Elon. God damn, this is brutal. I love it. If you separate yourself and Come say, on. look at this company, well, I think that's tr the truth, right? I'm not so showing like, sentiment. I'm, everything I say right. is a fact, Bryn. It's a fact. I know, but why, are, why do you, why does, like, he's a grown man, and he, I don't know, the Joe Rogan thing is just, like, strange, and that was years it's ago. It's not just Joe Rogan. And so I think we're, that if you just look Isaacson's at the company... Book. If you look at the company, and when you still look at the two companies where the best engineers want to work, is our SpaceX and Tesla. Because this is not an Elon show as well, although it feels that way. He has to be able to retain top talent. And I think as it relates to Tesla specifically, being pragmatic about the company, as I said, the chart looks terrible. And they are in a very murky situation right now, because it feels like, are you going to be a car company that's balancing higher revenues, higher earnings and margins, and then also innovating at the same time with full self-driving, more energy and robo-taxi? Or are you going to do a full pivot to robo-taxi? I think if they come out and do that, that's a revaluation of the name on the downside because that is probably five to 10 years out. So and by the way, I think that, why, yeah. by the way, why, sorry, Brent, you know, if, if you know, if this is principally a, a governance related story that's one aspect of it sounds like it's a sounds like it's a major one however you could right it's no, major. even put that aside the fundamentals deteriorating we've we've hit limit in terms of the ev adoption they've got the old oh this just gets better and better we just heard apparently that we've hit the limit so if i'm understanding what steve's emoting here i think his love of elon musk is telling him that no more than roughly 10, 11, if you want to be generous, call it 13 million electric vehicles will ever be sold in a single year on Earth. We've hit peak EV growth, adoption, whatever you want to call it. That's it. Now, obviously, Steve is extremely intelligent, not at all emotional, isn't displaying any anti-Elon bias. And clearly, he's just looking at the facts, such as on screen now, electric vehicle sales as a percent of all vehicles sold in the light vehicle category on Earth. So it's not including trucks. Since 2013, looks to me like there's a trend. Steve believes that we've peaked. 
I believe that Steve does not know what the fuck he's talking about. C- can he be serious? Or is his judgment clouded by Elon bad? I mean, hello. Just to be clear, we've seen approximately a 100x increase, 100 times increase in electric vehicles sold as a percent of all new vehicles sold over a decade. There's no sign over this 10-year period of a change in the overall shape of adoption here. This is a beautiful, smooth exponential increase. We're now past 10% of all new vehicles sold. Less than a 10x and it's 100% of all new vehicles. How on earth does this guy think he can make this statement and be taken seriously? How, what? I really wish these Tesla short sellers would have more serious points. Something that I could at least partially agree with. It's just so absurd to suggest that... Does he actually believe this? I, I'm having a hard time processing. Like, does he actually believe what he said? Or is he just saying what he's saying because he's short Tesla stock and he wants to create a little bit of fear and make some money on his short position? I just... What do you guys think? Does he actually believe that? This EV lineup in the industry globally, they've got 20% of their revenues coming from China. We've seen what China has done. Okay, we've seen Apple move their supply chain to India. Well, that awkward moment when I can dig up recent posts I've made on X that managed to debunk points that Steve has made after the posts were made, almost as if everything he said is absurd. This one regarding China. As you can see, it's over for Tesla, and the entire board of directors needs to be removed immediately. Also, Elon bad. That was reposting this from John of the EV Universe on X. Best selling electric vehicles in 2023. China. Tesla. Model Y. One more time. Best selling electric vehicles in 2023. Number one in China. Tesla. Model Y. How about Europe? Number one. Tesla. Model Y. United States. Tesla. Model Y. Please tell us more about your concerns regarding Tesla in China, Steve. They're obviously reasonable and well founded. And they've got better relationships and longer standing relationships with the Chinese government. We've seen China. China is supporting their domestic producers that, by the way, make newer, more richer in terms of the accessories, in terms of, of, you know, basically even the, even, you know, the, the, um, the. Jeez, he's struggling here. Is this a sign he's not confident in his point or he's just getting a bit old and fumbling his words? Of course, once again, as we can see, he's definitely got a point. The Chinese electric vehicle makers are making better, more advanced, whatever the fuck he was trying to say, electric vehicles, which is why the number one selling electric vehicle in China in 2023 was the BY, oh, it was the Tesla Model Y. Uh, hmm. The range, so of their Ooh. cars than Tesla. Num- that's hey, number Scott. two. Yeah. Number three, number three, mm-hmm. we've seen Elon just tweet out, oh, no more prices, we're raising prices. He lied, they're cutting prices. We would say big robo taxi announcement. We've got, we secured funding for the take private. The guy is a pathological liar to keep his. <laughs> nah, I knew it was coming, bro. The pathological liar. <laughs> oh, I can't take this guy seriously. Their cope is just next level. The guy is a pathological liar to keep his, his stock price up. So forgetting about that, the fundamentals deteriorating. You've got, you've got lots full of EVs that are selling at me. Now, look, I'm not one to use r-bombs to describe people who would accurately be described with such a term but i just couldn't not bring this up okay steve here who's definitely not an r-bomb claimed that elon musk is a pathological liar pathologically lying specifically to keep tesla's stock price up right that he just said that which completely squares with this post from elon regarding tesla's stock price in which he literally said tesla's stock price is too high in my opinion that certainly to me sounds like the comment from somebody who will lie, pathologically lie, in order to keep the price of Tesla stock high or up, right? That, that makes total sense. Yeah. Well done, Steve. You absolute fucking fill in the blank. This is a problem with these short sellers. You cannot take things they say seriously. How, does, how do his comments square with reality? What the fuck other leader of a company in the history of companies has ever suggested out loud in public that they thought the stock price was too high? Anyway, back to Steve. Major discounts from the major auto players that couldn't sell them. So the fundamentals are horrendous. Yeah. So, so I think that with in Excuse China, me, more they actually, no, no, no. Let, let's bring go. Let, I mean, let, one let more thing. Go. Oh, it's oh. like one more, one more like buzz, buzz line. It's like, holy fuck, dude! Somebody get a body bag. She has absolutely killed this guy. Just getting roasted for another one of these moronic Tesla Q <laughs> bullet points. <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> Uh, I don't think Steve realizes how completely and utterly fucked he's getting, but dude, Bryn has just completely torn him to pieces. You ever been in a situation socially where there's a little bit of a joke at somebody's expense and 
it's at a certain level where the person who's being roasted is actually unaware of the roasting, yet others in the room are. This seems to be what's sort of going on here. I don't think Steve realises how he's been completely and utterly murdered here, live on air. Once again, you just don't like Elon, by the way. And so, so it's like when you... Facts. We need a name for Bryn here. What is it? Bryn the Destroyer? Bryn the Impaler? Somebody let me know in the comments below. Got to, got to come up with a good name. She's absolutely fucking killed this guy with facts. You Elon's a genius. I've said that repeatedly. At, when, when, you, when you look at the EV market, they're actually continue to be with BYD, the top selling brand in China. And so while we look at America, which is about 9% of the EV space, China, which Tesla was the single, it's like the only manufacturing company that was able to build in China autonomously without having influence from the China Chinese government. He has a very strong relationship. I believe they're about to announce they're gonna be building their next gigafactory in India, a huge untapped market. And so I think that when you look at this company in the US, if this was a US EV story, I would not own this name. That's I don't think Americans want to drive like EVs Elon. in. That's a hell I of think a Americans don't want to you drive know. EV. Bro, the guy's coping so hard. It, uh, this is really hard to watch. He couldn't, he just had to interrupt too. She's called out the obvious and poor Steve here is in such denial, such intense cope that he just, he's reflecting it back. No, 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 I don't dislike Elon. Is that all you got? She's just completely exposed the guy and he's just, he can't handle it. Can't accept it. It's absolutely personal. It's extremely obvious to any outside observer. Steve clearly doesn't like Elon. Bryn's called it out and now Steve's just doubling down on his cope and denial. I've got to give credit to her, by the way. Most folks wouldn't have the balls to call Steve out like this. Well done, Bryn. He seems a little triggered. He's um, as their only the, the car, thing, let me but just in say China something. it's a very different story. Well, let me just say something. Hold on, let me work this in and you can say what you want. Then we're going to be done. Uh, Adam Jonas today, Morgan Stanley. Why do we remain overweight Tesla shares? And look, he's been, you know, skeptical along the way about, right. you know, the, the repeated price cuts and all the other stuff. We believe Tesla has significant attributes to be valued as an AI beneficiary. But the but currently hearing from the anchor on CNBS, you started his comments that Adam Jonas, who in the past has been skeptical about certain things regarding Tesla, he's not like a raging, deluded Tesla fanboy. Ahem. He's pointing out the fact that Morgan Stanley. Adam Jonas believed that Tesla is not only automotive, but also set to be a huge beneficiary of AI. In other words, Tesla is not just a car company. Now, let's see what happens. Company must first see stabilization in the negative earnings revisions mm -hmm. within yes. the auto business. Yep. Right, he's not saying they have yep. But Bryn's entirely wrong about their ability to retain talent. If you take a look at Tesla and you take a look at, we just had two critical. Uh, this is an all time dodge. Zero response to the commentary around AI. He's just, he's just going down his list of Tesla Q bullet points. <laughs> this is just so amazing and painful to watch. But Elon bad, therefore Tesla bad. Look, I haven't finished saying all my negative fun points yet. Wait. People leave Tesla yeah. this week. Their turnover in their executive ranks and their engineering ranks is legendary, is un- Yes, it's true. The two executives in question, average tenure, was 13 years. One had been at Tesla for literally 18 years, the other eight. So somebody almost two decades, the other almost a decade. Turnover is legendary. <laughs> oh, bro. <sighs> now again, you notice how Steve is not talking about the company, their execution, their market leadership, their industry leading profit margins, their technology, none of that. He's talking about well, look, but, but Elon bad, company bad, executive turnover. Uh, what best-selling vehicle in China and Europe and the United States? Look, the fun point. I'm not finished with my fun points. Unprecedented. So I don't know where she gets that from, but look at the facts. And I know it's maybe because I just don't like Elon that all these people are leaving, but I really had nothing to do with it. No, they I, left I, on their I, own. I, I totally, yeah, I mean, this, once again, this, this he's a, definitely up. a... Bro, Bryn's face says everything. I'm going to rewind a few seconds. I don't know if you guys are watching. By the way, Steve looks very proud of himself. Thinks he made a great point there. But just watch Bryn's, Bryn's face as he's delivering these final remarks. Maybe slow it down if you have to. Just watch her expression shift. This is just painful. I know it's maybe because I just don't like Elon that all these people are leaving, but I really had nothing to do with it. No, I, 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 I totally, yeah. I mean, this, once again, this, this he's a, is definitely up. a... So yeah. you feel the stock is up 750% over the last five years. Exactly. Yeah. And I haven't been short over five years. I'm short now because it's all coming home to roost. I understand, but there are periods of time Correct. over the last five years where notable people have been short 
and it hasn't mattered because their shorts have been proven to have not worked well. Again, I haven't been short, number one. Number two, I, I understand. how many other EV manufacturers have we had over the last 10 years? Bryn? What, I don't even know what that means. How many? Bro, uh, nor do I. I. I don't even know what that means, too. What, what's he, does anyone understand what his point was meant to be there? There's been a handful, quite a handful. None of them have been particularly successful yet outside of China. Many in China are still unsuccessful. I don't. What was he trying to get at there? It's a fair point for Bryn. What the fuck were you saying, dude? Was this supposed to be, there haven't been many, therefore just wait till the competition comes because they're finally coming? Or was it supposed to be, there's been lots and I, I just, what, what is that even supposed to mean? Price cuts have we had with Tesla models over with, the last I mean, five Steve, years? Like how, Steve, how many with, cuts, with, with, how Steve many, wisdom what, is chasing you if you would just stop, okay? Holy fuck, dude. Holy fuck. Oh my god. It's like, uh, there's clearly only one adult in the room here. An emotional little boy. Uh, we got to hear that again. Holy fuck, dude. I think Bryn has just become my new favorite here. Price cuts have we had with Tesla models over with, the last I mean, five Steve, years? Like how, Steve, how many with, cuts? With, with, how Steve, many, wisdom what, is chasing you if you would just stop. Okay? Like... Seriously. Like, what the hell is she saying? I don't even get it. Steve, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. Just admit <laughs> This is so good. She's just murdered him again. Okay, Bryn is officially a serial killer. Only one victim, though, but repeatedly. Somebody get a body bag. Seriously. I have to listen to that again. Holy fuck. I mean, Steve, years. like, how Steve, how many with, 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 how Steve many, wisdom what? is chasing you if you would just stop. Okay? Like... Seriously, like what the hell is she saying? I don't even get it. Steve, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. Just admit you're wrong and the stock is going lower and I'll buy more lower. That's what she should be saying. Facts are facts. The f there's no fact that the stock is there doing facts anything with everything here. I said about the governance, about the price cuts, about his tweets that have all been wrong, about the competitive landscape, about the appetite for EVs. Those are all facts. Bren, we'll see. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Absolutely legendary. And I do agree with Bryn here, Steve. Seriously, dude, just stop. Just stop. I mean, look, Scott can't even contain his amusement at this exchange. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, dude. I wonder if Bryn's going to get invited back. <laughs> that was savage. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud, reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, 
everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud, but... Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. You get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links in the pinned comment. See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.